This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The 2023 Kentucky Derby is coming up on Saturday. The post draw has been conducted, and we are ready for the running of this year's race. Here to break things down for us here today is Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV. We're going to pick her brain on her horse racing process and her read on this year's field. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sadas. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, joined here as mentioned by Christina Blacker. You can find her on Twitter at ChristinaFDTV. She is a horse racing analyst and reporter for FanDuel TV. And Christina, you are live on site. How are you doing today? I am doing really well. Thanks for having me on the show. Definitely appreciate joining you and just being able to talk about the sport that I love. I've been living and breathing horse racing since I was a little kid. My dad was a jockey. I grew up around horses. I've always loved this sport and it's never more exciting than this week and these couple days leading up to the Kentucky Derby. There's no place else I'd rather be than right here at Churchill Downs. Well, I'm jealous because you are there, as you mentioned, on site. You're sitting outside. It looks gorgeous out there. So I'm jealous right now. And we're going to talk about this year's field. We'll break down your overall process to get your read on if people want to dive into this, you know, do their own research and stuff like that and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread to get these podcasts as they go live each and every weekday. We broke down the Wells Fargo Championship for PGA uh, earlier today with Brandon Gadula. We have some UCL thoughts coming up later on, EPL as always, NBA, MLB, all in the same place. So search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, and you can check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Speaking of Saturday, the biggest horse race of the year is here, and there's no better time to get in on the action than on FanDuel Racing, because right now, all customers can get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20. That means you get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Racing app is super easy to use, safe and secure, and when you win, you get paid fast. So don't miss out. The derby is coming up this Saturday. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20 on FanDuel Racing. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and location restrictions apply. Uh, offer valid on first Derby win wager. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now, before I dig into this year's Derby, Christina, I want to talk about your process and how you arrive at a bet. So what steps do you take personally before you are placing a bet on a race when you're researching these things? So there's a lot of different data and there are a lot of different websites available if you're going to start handicapping horses. And I will say it's kind of like a muscle, like you have to work it to get better at it. And I think initially handicapping can be a little bit intimidating, but once you start learning and once you pick up a few angles that you really like and can follow, or even just some trainers that you really have success with, some jockeys that are high percentage, you know, that's a great way to first get into the game and to sort of decide what your own process is going to be. For me now, I look at a lot of different things. Of course, I use the racing form. I use Race Lens quite a bit, which is a product that Equibase puts out. You can pre-populate certain angles that you like and then save them in the product itself will back test those angles for percentages for you and then it will also search ahead so I have all these angles that I really like in terms of horse racing and race lens will tell me hey by the way there's a horse in race seven at Tampa today that fits your profile take a look and so I love that product because I've put the time into it and then it now is doing the work for me in some ways I watch a lot of replays. I think that that is the yeah. most valuable thing you can do with horse racing. And that's another thing that takes some time. You have to watch them, you have to learn from them. There's a great website called Trip Note Pros. Trip Note Pros breaks down replays for you in like a little blurb and a paragraph. So if you're new to racing and you wanna learn, A, they're kind of like cliff notes, I would say. That'll give you the yeah. info if you don't have the time. But if you're trying to learn, you can watch replays and then read what these experts say and take that information and see if you've kind of pulled the same thing from watching the replays. And then I'd say the third product that I rely the most heavily on is Thoroughgraph, which is a speed figure. They've basically boiled 
the entire performance and the contributing factors involved, whether it would be the wind that you can clearly see we have right now, <laughs> whether it is a horse that has lost a lot of ground, like a wide trip, they account for that sort of thing. And it all boils down to one number. And the key with Thurograph is the lower the number, the better the performance. But it's on a graph and you want to see how this horse is trending. You want to see if they're trending towards a lower number, meaning a faster race. And so I will copy that information into my racing form all the time. I use all of those things and I pull them all together before I make my decision. But there are, as I said, more straightforward ways if you don't have the time to invest. And this week in particular is a little bit more different because you know, we're focusing on these 20 horses for the Derby. And right. so we know everything about these horses. I've been here watching them train every single morning. It's impossible for me to watch every horse train on a random Saturday if I'm, you know, working a 10 race card and there's a hundred horses. But for these 20, I'm gonna take that next step. I'm gonna watch them train. And I wanna know who I think physically looks like they're ready to run their best race and mentally who is focused because the Kentucky Derby, is an experience like no other for a horse. You cannot prepare for that level of crowd, excitement, energy, noise. You need a horse that is kind of a professional themselves. Like one of those athletes that walks in like they own the joint, you need a horse that has that to win the Derby. Now for you, how much does the Derby differ then, given that it sounds like you're a very data-driven person. How much does the data influence your derby specific bets and how much is it eye test when you're on the ground you can see these horses up close? So I will say this, I, I, I'm i going to start with the data. That's yeah. where I'm going to start and try to find, you know, my horse or my group of horses that I think can win. But then my eye test can talk me off a horse sure. because I'm looking on paper and they're not machines and they're not right. necessarily going to do exactly what you think they're going to do on paper. So I will then use the physical as that second confirmation of, okay, yeah, that horse coat looks good. That horse's energy looks good. That horse looks really well defined, has a lot of muscle tone right now. Mm. Whereas you see some horses and really their, their coat tells you a lot about them. Uh, if their coat looks a little dull, if they're not kind of shining out there in the sun, it's an external reflection of their internal health. So okay. I will let a physical appearance talk me off a horse in that way. Can you let physical appearance talk you into a horse you are borderline on or is it yeah. more so process of elimination for you? Yes, yeah, sometimes you can, and I'll do this, just make a blind swing on physical sure. appearance <laughs> because there are times when I'll be at the racetrack and maybe I didn't see something on paper and there's so many things going on with the health of the horse that I don't know. You know, I'm right, not sure. their trainer. I'm not sure. watching them every single day. Mm -hmm. But if there's a horse that strikes you and you're thinking, wow, that horse looks really good, that horse is really carrying themselves with a lot of class, then for a price, if it's a 10 to 1, you know, big price, then I'm definitely willing to take sure. a swing on a physical like that. So you mentioned the the resources you use are race lens, trip note pros, and thoroughgraphs. So people have the time, dig into those and decide who you want to bet for this year, but people may not have the time, as you alluded to, you talked about this. So if people want to do some research on this year's field and try to dig into some specific races, are there any you would highlight as being especially telling when trying to research for these 20 horses on Saturday? Well, first of all, on our app, on FanDuel TV Plus, yeah. we have a ton of segments that are basically us telling you this information. So I've interviewed these trainers. Those interviews are up there. We've analyzed their final works as a team, and that analysis is up there on FanDuel TV Plus. All of the replays from the biggest derby prep races are right there. So you can absolutely use our over-the-top platform as one of those resources. But then on top of that, Thurograph has an analysis sheet. Just start there if it sounds too overwhelming. Trip Note Pros, as I said, is like a Cliff's Notes. Start there. And then Race Lens has a webinar that I'm hosting tomorrow night. So we're gonna go through the Derby and do all of that for you. And again, you can just listen and kind of follow along. And we've boiled it down for this race to make it a little bit more simple. I will cut that up and we'll send it just to the FanDuel TV Plus people and be like, this is your ad. This is your ad for your app. You know, this is yeah. all you need. Just Christina talking about this. People yeah. will be sold on that. I'm sold personally, so I hope people listening are as well. Okay, so we can do a lot of that via FanDuel TV Plus or the other apps you mentioned, Thurograph, Trip Note Pros, and Race Lens. Now, yesterday afternoon, we had the post draw for the Kentucky Derby, and obviously that's going to shift some odds around a bit. Um, what were the big takeaways for you? With regards to the draw, were there any horses who were advantaged or disadvantaged by the draw they got on Monday? I think so. So let's start with the favorite, Forte. Forte drew, and I have it up here in my little clip notes, post position 15. That's a good spot for him. 
there are 20 horses that run in the Kentucky Derby. We don't normally run a field that big for most races. Most races that you're going to see day to day would be 8, 10, 12 horses. And they actually built a special gate a couple years ago just to accommodate the size yeah. of the field and to give everybody a fair chance to begin. So depending on your style, there are certain places where you would want to be drawn. Forte is a horse that kind of makes his own luck. I don't think there would have been necessarily a bad spot for him. But being in post position 15 does give him the opportunity to really just see what some of the other horses want to do tactically and then kind of find his own place. The phrase that you're going to hear a lot from trainers is break and go forward. You come out of the gate and you want to go forward because when you have 20 horses like that, they are going to come together and some horses are going to get shuffled back and you're going to end up further back than you want to be. The Kentucky Derby is a difficult race to come too far off the pace from just because there's going to be traffic. And if you don't have a very agile and athletic horse that can kind of stop and start and accelerate and slow down and be very responsive to their rider, you'll end up with trouble. So Forte, I think, ended up in a good spot. There's a couple horses that I think the post position isn't going to be helpful to their style. One of them is a horse by the name of Verifying. He drew post position two. He is fast enough to make the lead, but I know his trainer doesn't want him to. So now they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he gets shuffled back, I think they take him out of his game but they don't necessarily want to send him right up there, but I think they have to send. I think you're you're better off being closer to the pace than getting kicked out the back and having nowhere to run. The other horse that I think drew poorly was, in my eyes, one of the best win contenders, and that's the horse snip by the name of Tap It Trice. He's post position five. And the thing about Tap It Trice is he has this monster stride and every stride gets bigger. Every stride he covers more ground and he's like a freight train. I mean, he'll run down the middle of the racetrack and he would run through anything you put in <laughs> front of him. But because he's so big and you think of that momentum, if you stop a horse like him, it takes a long time to get that big stride going again. And so he's not one that I think can afford to get shut off or slowed down. And I would have loved to see him outside in like a 14, 15, 16 post. Whereas I think post five, I think he's definitely one of the best in the field, but I really think it's going to hurt Tappet Trice. Everybody else, I think, is kind of in an okay spot. Yeah, so verifying 15 to 1, Tappet Trice 5 to 1 right now. After the post draw, it sounds like those might not have been the best places, but it sounds like you're not counting them out despite that, um, despite some potential obstacles there for that. True. Yeah, and, and really, it's up to their jockeys. You know, their riders know them. They've ridden them in their prep races. It's right. going to be down to them. Tyler Gaffleon is on verifying. He rides routinely here at Churchill Downs. He's young. He's really smart. He's very tactical. I would trust him implicitly with that post position. Luis Saez is the rider of Tappet Trice. He's been aboard him in his last several starts, and I think it's a good thing he's been able to because Luis is very strong, and he's a horse that he's like a bike. If you don't keep pedaling, he's not going to keep running. Right. So they're a great team team and they know each other well but I do think that Luis has to get him in the clear at right. some point you have to swing him out because his weapon is that stride and if you take it away from him in traffic he's never going to get there okay so let's uh, keep, keep an eye on those two verifying and tap at trice the two Christina was highlighting there now let's talk about Forte you talked about uh, them earlier on three to one the odds on Forte sounds like a favorable post draw there tap at trice is second in odds five to one I want to ask you about Forte what, in your opinion, makes Forte the favorite here? And is there value in betting them at three to one? So, I mean, I think that three to one isn't a bad price. Like, you know, any other day, if you're getting three to one or if you're getting plus 300 and you're betting sports, you're pretty happy about that, right? And you think, like, <laughs> this is the favorite for the Kentucky Derby. I'm okay with it. I don't think he's a standout against this field. I do think he's the best horse in the field, but I don't see him as an unbeatable favorite. And because there's so much value in the Kentucky Derby, I would absolutely be including him on my tickets, exactas, trifectas, superfectas, that sort of thing. But for a win wager in the Derby, I'd be wanting a little bit more of a price. The reason why he's the favorite though is because he's been good from two to three. So keep in mind, the Kentucky Derby is for three-year-olds only. You can only run in it in your three-year-old season. Last year at two years old, he was the champion two-year-old of this class. He beat them all in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, which is the champion race for two-year-olds. He's carried that form into three and he's made that transition. And sometimes 
as with any athletes, we'll have this two-year-old that's maybe physically a little bit more developed than the rest. And when everybody else catches up at three, they're not necessarily the best anymore, but he's made that transition and he's grown and he's just as good at three, if not better than he was at two. And he's undefeated so far this year. He's also had a few races where the trip hasn't worked out ideally for him. He's had some trouble and he's just a an athlete he's a gamer he doesn't get stopped and he doesn't really let traffic upset him to the point that he's not going to re-rally just when you think he's sort of oh god there's no way he can get himself out of that he does he's i, I called him the um patrick mahomes of horse racing like when you think it's over it's not over forte finds a way to win and that's why i love him and that's why i think he's a deserving favorite and if he is your horse i can't talk you off of him but i do think that numbers wise he's not like a huge standout over this group and it sounds like if that's your view there is viability to bet some other horses in this race yeah. so beyond forte we got a lot of options where do you see the best value in the field to win saturday's kentucky derby so the horse that i think i'm going to end up selecting is angel of empire he's drawn post position number 14. his rider is flavian pratt who is a french rider but he's been here in the states for a long time he was the leading rider in california for for ages the thing i like about angel of empire and i talked about those third graph figures he has a perfect page his third graph looks like he's going to run his career best race this weekend and if he does that, he's faster than everybody else. He's already shown that he's right there on par with the Fortes and the other Tapatrices of the world, as I lose my AirPod. <laughs> but I do think that he is one that's sitting on a career best. He's also, he has what Tapit Trice has in that he has that big stride, but he's more agile. So I think he's a horse that needs that similar type of trip but i think he's more athletic and can get himself out of trouble if that arises for him and i just think the way that he's been campaigned he's kind of had some easier spots along the way but i'm not upset about that because he's coming into this race feeling good feeling fresh and and really ready to fire angel of empire eight to one as you mentioned in the 14th post uh for saturday's race have you gotten a chance to check out angel of empire at churchill downs to kind of give the uh -huh. eye test portion as well yeah i've seen him he looks great and he's uh he's a very physically imposing horse he's really big but he is well built in that it's Sometimes you'll see big horses and they're kind of gangly and they're a little bit uncoordinated and they don't quite have their feet underneath them. He's like a specimen when you look at him. He's the total package and he's very intimidating to other horses around because he's just physically bigger than a lot of them. Yeah. All right. Well, Angel of Empire 8 to 1 is where Christina is looking for the win bets. But as you mentioned, you do like Forte and some other bets as well. Angel of Empire for the win bet, but we got a lot of options, a lot of ways to bet this derby. So what are the bets you're looking to place beyond just the win bet on Angel of Empire? So I have a colleague, Caleb Keller, that always plays the Superfecta in the Kentucky Derby because it pays like... I mean, I think the cheapest one he found was something like 27000 I mean, it's insane. And you can bet it pretty cheaply if you want to. Like, you can play these 20-cent Superfectas, 50-cent Superfectas, and you can box a bunch of horses and kind of give yourself a lot of different chances because there is a certain amount of luck in the Kentucky Derby with 20 horses. You know, Unfortunately, it's one of those races where because of the full field, the best horse doesn't always win. You right. need to have a horse that's capable and to get a good trip. So you can afford to be a little bit wacky with some of your bets and just throw in some prices because it can happen. I mean, last year, Rich Strike won and he was 80 to one. It was the biggest yeah. upset in Derby history because he got a great trip and he had a real hot pace to run at. All the front runners went too fast too early and they were backing up, backing up, slowing down and he waited in last and then flew up the rail and saved all the ground and won basically on trip versus ability. So I would play some of those trifectas. I would play some of those superfectas. I love the pick four, which is kind of like a parlay. You're trying to pick the winners of the three races leading up to the Kentucky Derby, and then you kind of finish the sequence with the Derby. And if you love a horse like Forte, maybe you finish it on a single and try to find your price somewhere else. Or you might find a short price along the way to the Derby, and then you can afford to use eight or nine horses in the Kentucky Derby in your wager and be sitting on a really big payout. Either way, I think you need to give yourself some options. I think you need to keep an open mind about some of those prices. Dermaso Tagake is another horse I would include. He's the 17 horse. He's here from Japan. And the Japanese have put a lot of money and a lot of American breeding into their racehorses over the last 20 years. And we're really seeing 
their investment in their program come to fruition. They've won some of the biggest races in Dubai this year. They've won some of the biggest races in Saudi Arabia. They won their first Breeders' Cup races last year. They've tried to win the Kentucky Derby before, but this is hands down the most talented horse they've ever brought to Kentucky. So I think if Japan's going to do it, this is the horse to get them there. He's a little goofy. I've been watching him train. <laughs> he's he's just like freakishly talented, but not yeah. super focused. But again, like he has the ability to get there and to do it. So he's a horse to throw in on some of those bets too. And just, just have a little fun with it, I would say. Derma Sotagake is 10 to 1 in the 17th post there uh, for this weekend. Is Goofy good? Like, do you view that no. as like, is that like loose or is that, no. does that unnerve you a bit it's for a large like, crowd? It's like, I would say he's like a punk kind of. Okay. He, he doesn't <laughs> want his rider to be in charge. He wants to do his own thing. But he's so talented and he's so yeah. fast that yeah. it's, it's like you have to give him the opportunity to just pull it together for this yeah. one moment because he's good. he has the ability to win. So we got a Patrick Mahomes horse, we got a yeah. punk horse. I love yeah. it. Christina. We've got like a Travis fantastic. Kelsey with Tap It Trice running through everybody. <laughs> I love it. This is perfect. We have it all. I love it. I need the full full breakdown of all 20 NFL comps to make it easy for me to understand. <laughs> yeah. I think we're good. We're, yes. we're already, you know, one tenth of the way there. So why right. not finish all off? That is Christina Blacker. Make sure you check her out on Twitter at Christina FTTV and check her out over on FanDuel TV as well. Mentioned uh, the FDTV Plus app to check out all the research that they've been doing, all the work they've been doing over at FanDuel TV to get you ready for the Derby. Christina, enjoy the rest of the week at Churchill Downs. Hopefully the weather stays as good as it looks right now and uh, have fun and good luck to you on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, once again, check out Christina on Twitter at Christina FDTV to find all that work in the FanDuel TV app it's where you can find all those resources. Other resources Christina mentioned uh, were uh, Thoroughgraph, TripNote Pros, and Race Lens. If you want to do your own research, dig into the numbers and decide which sources you want to bet for this week. That's all we got here for today on Covering the Spread. With the double show for today, no show tomorrow on Covering the Spread. We are back with you once again Thursday talking to Dr. Ed Fang, getting his read on the UEFA Champions League semifinals. That should be a whole lot of fun to talk to Ed once again. But good luck to all of you with your derby bets. Have fun on Saturday. We'll talk to you all once again on Thursday. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 